I think it's pretty safe to say that most fish keepers out there are keeping smaller fish, you know, things that don't get above maybe two or three inches. But a few of us are crazy enough to keep the bigger fish, you know, ones that get up to around 12 inches or more. And I'm here to tell you that there are some challenges with that. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you five reasons why keeping big fish actually sucks. Okay, so I obviously don't think that keeping big fish is like just terrible all the way around. I have a 240 gallon African cichlid tank with some pretty big Africans in it. And then I also have my 435 gallon tank San Quentin that has some really big American cichlids in it. Well, okay, they're not really big yet. They're only like this big, but they're gonna get huge eventually, some sooner than others. So there are some things about big fish that I obviously like, and I'll throw those in at the end of the video for you. But first, let's talk about the things that make them suck. And one of them is that they eat a lot of food. And when you eat a lot of food, guess what else you do? If you said poop a lot, then well, you were spot on and you win the Big Brain Award for the day. But first, let's back up a step and talk about the problem with feeding big fish, which is it's gonna cost you. I think it's safe to say that most people with big fish are into the hobby a little bit more than your ordinary fish keeper, or at least I hope they are. So you are probably aware that when you bought that cute little fish that later turned into a 12 inch Oscar, that it was gonna eat piles and piles of food. With your little community fish, you can usually just add a pinch of flakes into your tank and that's about all she wrote. But do that with your big guys and they're gonna starve to death. Even my Africans, which aren't too huge yet, most are around the six to seven inch mark at the moment, eat a shit ton of food. And when I'm done feeding them, they just look at me like, was that it, bro? You gotta be kidding me. And as they get even larger, because some of them will eventually come in around 12 to 14 inches, they're gonna need some mass increases to the amount of food they consume. So I'll just be shoveling it in, you know, watching my bank account drop dollar by dollar with each passing pellet they devour. Don't even get so much as a thank you. When we feed our fish, we wanna feed them the good stuff. We don't wanna give them fast food like we eat. No, we wanna make sure that they're healthy and that they color up. And what I use is North Fin because I know that all their food is great. And I'll be doing a video on just North Fin food next week. Just make sure that the food you use is fantastic. And when you do that though, you gotta be prepared to spend some money on it. Watching your big guys eat is really enjoyable. I mean, it's usually one of the best parts about fish keeping, but you need to understand that the bigger your fish get, the more money you're gonna to have to put out there just to feed them. But I found that fish keepers are usually weird like me and don't mind sacrificing a date night so I can just buy another huge bag of quality fish food for my big fish. Okay, I'm gonna talk about poop for just a second here. I used to think that my Africans pooped a lot and they do poop frequently. It's just that they don't poop huge mass amounts of poop. I mean, it's little thin strings that get blown around by the wave makers. They end up over at the intakes and they get sucked up through the slats and they're gone. With my American cichlids, and I don't have any really big ones right now except for Buck, and he's just about eight inches, but he's girthy. And he doesn't poop little thin strings of poop like the Africans do, oh no. This guy poops like a man. I mean, he has huge chunks of turds all around the tank after just a single day. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at that, there's shit everywhere. Have some respect for your home, dude. Buck should top out at around 10 inches, so not huge, but still pretty big, especially considering how thick he is. These gigantic pieces of poop aren't going to get sucked up by the filter as easily as those thinner pieces from the Africans, and it can really lower the aesthetic of your tank if you have a bunch of poop sitting around that you haven't siphoned out. That'll mean extra work for you if you want your tank to look nice. Plus, I mean, you just don't want it sitting around in your tank, because eventually it's going to raise your nitrates. You will subscribe. Ding ding. Another reason why keeping big fish sucks is that they're so expensive. I mean, once you have big fish in your tank, you can't just add smaller fish to it and hope that they'll be okay because they're not gonna be okay, they're gonna get eaten. But if you have small fish, you can just go down to your local fish store and buy some, and they're, they're only gonna cost you maybe three to $10. But if you're getting big fish, there's a huge price leap when you're getting those. I mean, some of the fish that I buy, they're gonna end up being around $70 just for one of them. But there is a way around it. You can get your fish at a smaller size, and if you're patient, you can just let them grow out in a safe tank until they're ready to go in your display tank. But this takes a lot of time and patience. And I'll be honest, sitting around waiting for your fish to grow out in a boring tank while you're waiting to put them in your cool tank really sucks big time. This little 23 gallon tank houses Eel Longoria and one of her buddies, both too small for San Quentin. This little guy's too small because he'll get eaten, and Eel Longoria is too small because she hides all the time, and I'd never find her in a 10 foot long tank to feed her. I already tried that, and you can see my video about that huge failure in the upper right corner. 
So these two will stay here at least for a few more months, probably longer. I'm feeding the tire track eel a maggot per day, which hopefully will reduce the amount of time she's going to be in here, because even though I may seem patient about this waiting period, I'm totally not. One problem with growing out your own fish is that you can end up with a whole lot of tanks everywhere in your house. And this might not be a problem for you, but for some people that could be seen as somewhat of a pain in the ass. For me, I have, I have three smaller tanks and then I have one bigger tank just for growing out fish. And then also just having that room taken up with fish tanks when you could be using it for something else. But then again, what could be better than more fish tanks, right? If you don't have multi-tank syndrome yet, then just wait. You'll succumb to the illness just like the rest of us have. One thing about keeping big fish is that you're gonna have to have a big tank and a lot of filtration. Contrary to popular belief, you can't just buy an Oscar that's gonna get about 12 inches or so and put them in a 30 gallon tank. You're gonna have to have a bigger tank for them and you're gonna have to make sure that that water's kept clean because I already told you about how much these guys poop. And that's gonna cost you, both in money and space in your home. Once you start getting into the bigger fish and you have more than one of them, you're looking at at least a 125 gallon tank. And even then you can be pushing it. You might only be considering the length of your tank, but if your fish is getting up to and maybe over the 12 inch mark, just think about the turnaround room in there. If I had Ferk the second the second in a 125 gallon, when he grows out, he could be like 14 to 16 inches long. And that tank is only 18 inches deep. A little restrictive if you ask me. Claustrophobia. Even for an Oscar or my chocolate cichlid at about 12 inches when they are at full maturity, I'd still feel better with more depth in the tank. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I like keeping my fish in tanks that are bigger than the minimum tank size. So if uh, the recommended tank size is 30 gallons, I'll want at least a 55 for my fish. And with big fish, like even my American tank over here, the 435, when I'm getting these fish that are gonna get upwards of 14 inches or more, I feel like I might still end up thinking that the tank is too small for them. And you might be going, no, that's crazy. There's plenty of room for them to swim around. But I just wanna make sure that they're not feeling cramped in there because I just picture myself in a small room and being stuck there for my entire life. I wanna make sure that they're gonna be happy in there and that there's gonna be plenty of room for them to swim around and explore. Give your guys room to spread out and they'll appreciate it. But guess what? The bigger your tank, the more filtration you're gonna need. So now you have to spend more money on a larger tank and stand, don't forget the stand. And you'll need to be spending more money on getting some good filtration for that amount of water. There are less expensive options than the Fluval FX6 canister filters, but I'm using those as an example because that's what I have on Alcatraz. Each one of these three filters is over $300. If you go with a pre-made sump like I have on San Quentin, then that's gonna cost a lot too. Unless you're confident and you can make your own sump out of a smaller fish tank, which I'm totally not. So if you're gonna keep big fish, it can be a real pain because your home is gonna start looking like all you care about is fish, which in my case is true, so not a problem. And we already talked about spending tons on fish food, but that's nothing compared to what you'll initially be spending on your tank and filtration. This one you may have thought of, but maybe not. When you have bigger fish in your tank, you're gonna be limited to how many fish you can keep in there because they're taking up so much space. But this also limits you on what kind of fish you can throw in there. And there are a lot of smaller fish that you could put in a big tank and it would look fantastic and it'd have a huge variety of them. But once you get up and you start just having those huge fish in there, you're gonna have fewer fish and then you're also gonna have a smaller variety of fish in your tank. Maybe you're like me and variety isn't that important to you. Same thing day after day, kind of boring. But maybe it is. San Quentin has some variety and I'll be adding some more fish to the mix as soon as they become available from the breeders. Some of them will be more 10 to 14 inches at full maturity, by the way. But it's not the same as you could get with those smaller, less aggressive fish. You might say I have a lot of variety in Alcatraz with 20 to 30 fish that all look pretty different from each other, but they're still all African cichlids, so they look somewhat similar. The drawback of keeping bigger fish isn't a problem for me at all. I like fewer big fish in my large tanks, but if you want to fill your tank with as many different species as you can, then it may be better just to go with the smaller guys and get more of them. This one is a really important factor to consider when you're thinking about whether you should have a big fish or not, because this one really, really sucks bad. And it's because when your fish die, a little tiny tetra that dies in the back of your tank somewhere, it's not so hard to take. But when I have, let's say a, a 12 inch fish that you find dead in the tank, that seems more like you just lost a dog than a fish. 
Of course, I'm not just gonna leave you hanging with a bunch of reasons why big fish suck. There are some really good reasons why having big fish is incredible. One of the reasons you can get more attached to those bigger fish is because of their amazing personalities. Well, not all of them, but I mean, many of them have more character than you get with those smaller guys. You get to know them not only by their appearance, but by their personalities. Oscars have the most widespread reputation for having a great personality, and my little one has already shown me some of that. Always front and center, ready to greet me. I know he's just thinking of food, but that's okay, because I'm always thinking of food too. I have smaller fish in my 180 right now, and none of them are showing the same kind of personality that you get with the larger fish. Especially those boring angels. Still need to rehome those. Find a home for them where someone appreciates beautiful, boring fish. I also like larger fish because of the wow factor. When someone sees your tanks for the first time, they'll think much more of it if you have big fish in there. It's just the way it is. This might be an important factor for you, impress your friends, but since I don't have any friends, I'm satisfied just impressing myself with big fish. Ah, the joy of sweet, sweet solitude with no one to bother me with all their pesky friendship things. So what do you think, big fish or small fish? Let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to get future updates on all my fish. Until next time, that's a wrap.